Is that okay? My name is Elle Flanders. I am a Canadian Jewish filmmaker who grew up in a Zionist home in Israel. I have also recently returned from Ramallah, where I lived for the past year as both an out Jew and an out lesbian. While I rarely begin press conferences with such qualifiers, it seems sadly necessary in the face of the falsehoods and the ongoing questioning of our joint credibility. Being lectured on gay issues from older Jewish straight men has especially been a bee in my bonnet, but I will leave that, however, to John Grayson to dismantle it. <laughs> Feel free to ask me questions, however, about queer reality in Palestine. My qualifiers also give you a sense of the history that brought me to this point and to the many sides I've heard throughout my life. I come here today as one of the original organizers and signatories of the letter of protest sent to the Toronto International Film Festival in regards to their choice to celebrate Tel Aviv for their inaugural City to City program. I will try to clarify some of our positions that have been wildly misconstrued by opposing voices in an attempt to take you down a different path to take the focus off our protest and once away from the issue at hand. Why did TIFF choose to celebrate Tel Aviv eight months after the bombing of Gaza? Eight months after worldwide protests and human rights reports of war crimes. Our protest was to suggest that in the face of all this, not only was it in bad taste, but it was indirectly colluding with the Israeli government's campaign to rebrand Israel. The truth is that Israel has recognized that their popularity is slipping way down the poles. Alleged war crimes will do that to you, perhaps. Arya Mekel, Deputy Director General for Cultural Affairs of Israel's Foreign Ministry, told the New York Times, we will send well-known novelists and writers overseas, theater companies, exhibits. This way you show Israel's prettier face, so that we are not thought of purely in the context of war. Toronto, with its huge multicultural population, was chosen as the target city to launch this campaign. Amir Gissin, Israel's Consul General in Toronto, stated that, we want to make Israel relevant and attractive to Canadians and to refocus attention away from the conflict. This would be achieved through highlighting Israel's accomplishments in medicine, culture, and technology. He pledged the campaign would begin with the Dead Sea Scroll exhibit at the Royal Ontario Museum and culminate with a major Israeli presence at next year's Toronto International Film Festival with numerous festival Sorry, numerous Israeli, Hollywood, and Canadian entertainment luminaries on hand. I'm confident everything we plan to do will happen, he said, and indeed it has. We are not suggesting that TIFF is in direct collusion with the Brand Israel campaign, but rather we question, do TIFF's actions fit the purposes of the foreign ministry's interest? And we see that it does. This is reason enough for protest. The use of our festival to politicize filmmakers' individual works and in so doing, erase the history of a region that does not fit the Brand Israel campaign. We came together over the last several weeks as a group of concerned artists to voice our protest against TIFF's choice to celebrate and honor Tel Aviv on its 100th birthday, only months after the horrific bombardment of Gaza, which left over 1,400 people dead. Many of us, when we heard about the spotlight, including filmmakers from inside Israel, that alerted TIFF to the fact that whether intentionally or not, their efforts would help the government of Israel's stated plan to clean up its image and sweep the Palestinian issue under the rug if they continued in their mission. Clearly, they did not listen. It is not the films or the filmmakers we protest, but rather the frame, and hence our campaign was meant to begin the dialogue that TIFF missed out on, one that refuses the Israeli government's attempt to shift the focus away from the conflict that it maintains and worsens daily. We are distressed that what we have called our festival for so many years has chosen a frame that dismisses and refuses a deeply painful reality. However, we believe the tide is turning. Our campaign has compiled over 1,500 signatories worldwide. It, it has created a global community, a worldwide network of people who refuse to be bullied into silence about the ongoing atrocities committed by the State of Israel. We are weathering the tired old attacks of anti-Semitism and focusing rather on the real issues, the human rights abuses that are being glossed over at spotlights such as these. Some of the most notable directors, writers, actors, critics, producers, and other cultural luminaries, including respected filmmakers from India such as Anand Patwardin, actors Viggo Mortensen, Jane Fonda, America's Voice of Conscience Howard Zinn, Walter Bernstein, who was the American screenwriter and film producer who was blacklisted in the 1950s, 
Alice Walker, Eve Ensler, Danny Glover, musicians David Byrne, Harry Bont, Belafonte, Elia Suleiman, the list goes on and on. I won't do 1500, I promise. Over 60 Israelis signed the letter. 11 filmmakers from Israel signed the letter. Um, they had signed the letter they, <coughs> alerting Tel Tiff that celebrating Tel Aviv in this manner at this time is unacceptable. Our letter has garnered much support, but also, as to be expected, much opposition. But the opposition is much more fierce and more shrill than in the past. It has hurled lies, it has damaged reputations. It has called for funding to charities and foundations supported by signatories to be cut. It has called us censors, Jew haters, anti-Semites, and more. But I am here to tell you that we will not be intimidated, that I am far from a Jew hater, but rather a justice seeker, and that the lies are spread to make you, the media, focus on the wrong issues. Some of the issues that we want to contest in this letter are as follows. One, some of the issues that have, you've been misled. Censorship. Many of us have battled the Canadian wars on censorship. There is no call for censorship anywhere in this letter. We have been accused of politicizing culture, but it has been the festival and the Israeli government that has done this. We have in fact, we, we in fact defend Israeli filmmakers' right to screen along with the rest of the festival rather than as representatives of their government. I personally do find it amusing to be lectured on the ethics of artistic integrity from the guy who made meatballs. <laughs> We have not singled out Israel. TIFF did so by selecting Tel Aviv for a celebratory honor in a year of enormous Palestinian suffering. What other city or country in the world gets feted after killing, by conservative estimates, a thousand innocent civilians? Three, we did not at any time call for a boycott. We welcome Israeli films at TIFF like any other. We reject the frame and the celebration. Four, neither we nor anyone who signed the letter has called for the extinction of the State of Israel or have argued about Tel Aviv's legitimacy. We simply pointed out in our letter that contrary to the program notes which describe Tel Aviv as a young, dynamic city that, like Toronto, celebrates diversity, Tel Aviv should also be defined by its full history, which includes Palestinians, mostly whom are no longer part of that landscape, as they lost their homes, villages, and land to make way for the new Israeli city. It is also about Palestinians who face the same fate when Jaffa, the cultural center of Palestine, despite Robert Lantos' claim to the contrary that Palestine did not exist, was annexed by Tel Aviv and currently serves as a suburb for Tel Aviv yuppies and artists, forcing the remaining Palestinians from what was once their city. These are just some of the falsehoods being spread and the attempts to refocus this discussion, which is, I will reiterate, was this the right year for TIFF to celebrate Tel Aviv? Is it right for a festival to use culture as a tool to cleanse the image of a much tarnished state? Do we have the right to speak out when those wrongs have not been voiced? Let's be clear. This controversy is much more, is about much more than a spotlight at a film festival. Yes, it is uncomfortable when culture is drawn into politics, but that discomfort can lead to change. Thank you.